on today's episode of Moto Cheese. What is up, cheesers? Today we're going to check out this Ace Volt 700 watt portable power station in the back of Mini. Looks like it's designed a little differently than most. Nice purdy box. Claims five times product lifetime. 2500 plus charge cycles with a life PO4 battery. Cam Power 700 by Ace Volt. That's a nice looking unit. Kind of looks like my welder. With winter approaching up here in the northeast and the hurricane season down in Florida, you don't know how much you really want one of these until the power is out. Explore the world, recharge your soul. Comes with the Spanish novel, the manual. It has a 672 watt hour battery, LiPo 4 of course. Weighs 22 pounds. Nice multifunction LCD display with selectable output frequency. So it says Ace Volt was founded with more than 100 veteran campers and RV travelers from all over the United States who wanted to bring electricity to every chapter of their journey, learn more about their stories. They've been manufacturing since 2013, so they invited a team of 100 plus camping enthusiasts to participate in their research and development, and all their efforts led to the birth of the Ace Volt brand. Their warranty policy to replace any product that's damaged during shipping or manufacturing. They have a 30 day money back guarantee and Ace Volt provides a 24 month warranty beginning a date when the purchaser receives a product. Save the original box if you have to return it and you need a valid proof of purchase of course. Feels like a nice hefty power supply. So it's a 25.2 volt 8 amp. That's a decent sized power supply with fan cooling. There's a nice piece of Velcro strap to hold all the cables. Has a solar panel connector, AC power cable, DC charging power cable. Oh, that is fancy. Sixty-seven percent battery. Boy, that is a fancy looking unit, isn't it? Wireless charging pad. Wow, fancy. So you hold the display button for one second to turn on the light. And it has low, high, and SOS. AC function which has four AC outputs at 700 watts total. DC and USB, which has a USB-C 100 watt and two USB-A fast chargers, which are multiple voltages at multiple wattages. And also DC 12 volt 10 amp out. Looks like two of those. Yes. Input port for charging, which is MPPT, so it accepts solar and your input voltage is 12 to 28 and 200 watts max and of course a cigarette lighter plug which is also rated at 10 amps 12 volts i like this design very very stylish and it does look like my welder let's charge this up to 100 percent and do some tests on it thank you bro so ace Vol also has our own portable solar panel which you could purchase separately or together as a kit. This one's pretty lightweight too. It's a hundred watt, two year limited warranty. That's one of your prop legs. 100 watt, 19.8 volts to be exact. Nice little zipper panel here with your cables. So it's a Sun Power 166 single crystal ETFE solar cell lamination, 24% efficient, 19.8 volts, 5.05 amp max, 23.7 open circuit voltage, and 6.6 .6 short circuit current. 
Operating temperature is 14 to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Product manual, standard solar plugs. Has a little magnet that keeps it closed. Should have some full sunlight in about 20 minutes. The Camp Power 700 does come with the adapter. I'll probably keep that in here. I'll also supply links for the solar panel, the Camp Power 700, and the combo in the links in the description below. It does have grommets on all four corners. If you'd like to hang it from a tree or your awning on your RV, or whatever, with bungees or rope. So we'll set it up right about there. I'm still getting some shadows from my power lines. It's going to cause it not to be as efficient. Any shadows, do my little pen flat trick to see if we're lined up here. Mm, not too bad. Pretty close for now. The sun's going to be moving, but that's pretty close. Let's see what we're getting. About 79 watts right now. Once the sun moves and we don't have that shadow, I suppose I can move it over here. That yeah, looks like pretty pretty good. Looks like we're pretty close. Has a good amount of wire. Looks like nine feet of wire that's supplied with the solar panel. And an additional five feet with the Cam Power 700. That's 14 feet of cable total. That's a decent amount. And if you want more, you can order the extension. They come in a lot of different sizes. These are the 30 amp connectors, I believe. I'll uh, put a link for that too. Putting out 80 watts now. Up to 80% charge already. We'll leave her going. The solar panel itself is four foot wide, 21 and a quarter tall. So closed, it's two foot by 21 and a quarter. Or 24 by 21 and a quarter closed. We're doing 81 watts. That's the highest I've seen yet. And we're at 84% charge. Maybe I'll put this in the shade here. That's charging pretty quick then. That stupid power line. Let's see what we're doing now. 80 watts. So it looks like a continuous 80 watts. We can get out of that. What are we at? 92% battery. It's been about an hour. We're at 100%. When I got home from a bike ride, it was at 98%. So like three hours to get there. Not great sun, as you can see. I'll keep this all in the bag. Oh, snake bug. What are you doing? One thing I didn't notice is if there was a IP rating for the waterproofing. Oh, it's a IP54 waterproof. That's not too bad. Can't submerge it in the water, but it's a nice setup right there. 700 watts with a 100 watt solar panel you know honestly after reviewing dozens of these i don't think i'd want anything smaller than 700 watts they are a little pricey but well worth the money especially as a backup all right the time is 157 we're going to use a heater again because it is getting cooler turn the ac on we should we should be able to get to Number two. That's 487 watts. Let's see what number two is. Ooh, that's that's too much. We'll keep it at 489 watts. I would go a little over, but that's uh, quite a bit over. Let's check out what the pure sine wave looks like and see how many volts we're putting out. So 488 watts, 112 volts. We'll kick it up to, ooh. Yeah, 780. That's a bit much. It's still doing 113. That's that's pretty good. We'll definitely keep it at medium. 112 volts. That's a nice clean sine wave. Bouncing off 60 hertz. Very good. We'll let it run. So it's drawn 486 watts. It has a 672 watt hour battery. It should go over an hour. Been going eight minutes and it's at 88 percent so it's running a little bit over 15 minutes 77 percent battery 
Let's see how the thermal works. Sun's warming up the tailgate. There's the electric heater. That heat, I suspect, is from the sun. Staying pretty cool. There's the output fan. Staying nice and cool. This comes with a wireless charger for a smartphone. It says 15 watt output, 217. So it's been about 17 minutes. Should add 15 watts to that. Fast wireless charging. Yeah, it didn't raise it up. Oh, there it goes. It did raise it up a bit. It's got a USB-C 100 watt charger. Let's see how that works. Oh yeah. Super fast charging. Do it again. Check out the USB-A port. It's saying normal charge for me. So to get the fast charge to work off USB-A, you have to have the proper cable that has all the connections that go to the phone. Fast charge. It's 221. So it's been 23 minutes. And we're at 66%. That USB-C is out only. It doesn't say that it will charge with that port like some of them do. Alright, it's been exactly a half an hour and we are at exactly 50% so we might make that hour. It should definitely do an hour. We're at the 45 minute mark. 33% battery. Exactly one hour. And we have 12% battery left. It's showing a little battery indicator there. Let's see how much longer she'll hold up. And we're at 6% Still pumping out that heat. And it's 3.02 right now. One hour and five minutes. 5%. 4%. 3%. Oh, and that's it. And the time is 3.04. Not too bad. Let's hook up the AC charger. So it did do a temperature limit showing the battery. And it's showing a temp indicator. Let's see how long before it kicks back. And that wasn't at a full load either. That was about 200 watts below full load. The unit is not warm to the touch in any way. It does have a green flashing ace volt symbol. I'll shut everything off. Start over and see if it does it. No, nope. still getting a battery error. Hmm, that's a little bit unfortunate considering we didn't work it at a full load. And the temperature in my garage is approximately 72 degrees. All right, I let it sit. It's 437. Let's see if you cool down now. Just has a low battery now. I don't see an over temperature, so let's start the charging process. Hundred and ninety seven watts. Four thirty seven we started. And we'll let this run. See how long it takes to charge from zero. Five twenty four. Twenty one percent charge. Six forty six. And we were at 58%. Oh, wow, that power supply stays nice and cool. Power supply runs nice and cool. The unit itself is staying nice and cool. 736. 81% charged. Three hours. So it should be about four hours charging from zero. 807. 95%. Almost there. 839. 
and we're at 100%. I think I might have just missed it. So that's not too bad. Four hours from zero battery. It's pretty good compared to others I've tested. Yeah, you know, it's got a good almost 200 watt charger. And this stays nice and cool. Wow, nice big capacitor. That fan kept running for a while. And AC and DC power does work while it's charging. So if you have a solar panel charging it or this AC power adapter charging it, you can still use the outputs. So it looks like the overall length is 14 inches long, about 11 and 3 quarter high, and 8 and a quarter inches wide. This unit weighs 22 pounds. Let's run the battery back down so we can test out the 12 volt charging circuit. Let's push this up here, 778 watts. Let's see if it'll do to max. Nope. So it'll run at 760 watts. Pretty continuous. It's a little over what it's rated. It claims a 1400 watt surge. This doesn't draw quite 1400 watts. And it will shut it down. Overload. On high power, it pulls about 1200 watts. Let's run the battery down a bit and try out the 12 volt charging circuit. So at 760 something watts, overload. It ran in about 5 minutes. At 60 something watts over what it's rated. We're at 81%. That's eh, probably enough. We'll try the 12 volt charging. We'll use a mini truck for this test. <coughs> So it charges 22 or 23 watts on a 12 volt cigarette lighter circuit. So with the truck running and about 14.6 volts, I don't have a voltmeter in here, we will do the 90 plus watts. So on my 12 volt power supply, I'm doing 96 watts. So of course it depends on the wiring in your car. If you have a nice heavy 12 volt outlet, it'll charge at almost 100 watts. That's a little better. So what do I think of this unit? I really, really like the styling of it. I like that the LCD panel and the buttons are angled so it's easier to read. I like the one single handle and nothing on the side so it's easier for storing when you're going camping to put it in your car and everything. These sides look like they could have opened. <laughs> I'm sure there's not much room in there, but it would have been kind of cool to have a little pocket to put at least, you know, some accessories in there. Of course, you're not going to fit this. You'd have to build that into the unit. You still could have got the 12 volt in there and maybe some other stuff. Or maybe it's not a good idea at all. The display button is one second. I think they should jump that up to a three second hold for that front light because a lot of times I'll try to turn the display on and I turn the light on with it. So I do like it. Pretty fancy looking machine right there. See if you guys are really looking for one of these and they're very popular, these portable power supplies now. I'll have the link with a discount and everything down below or on MotorCheese.com. Like I said earlier. You don't know how much you'll need one of these until the power's out. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products to use are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.